Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the program tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, part two of what you can expect from your deliverance. What can you expect and what you need to do to prepare for your deliverance uh, when that happens? Uh, I'm your host, Henry Schaefer. I want to welcome everybody in. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And uh, I pray that all is well with our broadcast that's going out. And uh, if if Greg can just text me, just let me know. Say, hey, give me a thumbs up or text. It's sounding good. I appreciate it very much. So anyway, we're kind of doing it on, on our end here. So uh, anyway, we do want to welcome you right on in. I know we've got a lot of new people who are tuning in. And God bless you. Thank you for all that you're doing. And what we want to do is just let you know that here on uh, YouTube, there's a channel that's called Deliverance with Pastor Henry. Go there, subscribe, and hit the notification bell there so you can get all our schedules and all of that that's going to be taking place. Also, you can find us on Rumble, same name on Rumble uh, as well in the event something happens. And uh, so uh, anyway, welcome into this program. So let's go ahead and get started here because I've got just a few minutes that I want to uh, tell you some more things that you need to do preparing for deliverance. Now, what's going to happen, this video will be a video that I will share with people, part one, part two, that if they're coming for deliverance, this is what you need to send to them. Both of these uh, little videos here, short videos, about 30 minute teachings. So it will prepare everybody for that deliverance that's going to take place. So let's go, let's go, let's review here real quick. Some of the things that I did share with everybody uh, at the, at part one, we talked about the importance of you being saved, making sure that you're in the right relationship with God. And then we talked about repentance. Um, there are things that we have to repent from. That means turn away from the things that are in bondage to the sin that has encapsulated us in life. Repentance means turning, do a 180, not a 360, a 180. What you used to do, I decide I'm not going to do anymore, and you walk away. That's what repentance is. And then we talked about the reality of two kingdoms, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness as well. And we talked about some uh, generational curses, We're gonna uh, some generational sins and things that may have you in bondage that you need to look at into your life. And then we talked about what do you need to be set free from. And I, I tell people this here is that what is the number one thing? If you can get set free of one thing, what would that be? Are you willing to get on the internet? Are you willing to go through deliverance? Are you willing to come to wherever we have a deliverance session at? I mean, that's what they did in the Bible. People were desperate. Jesus only ministered to desperate people. There were a lot of people who were in need, but it was the desperate people that sought him out and got their deliverance. And that's what we're seeing here in the last days as well. So let's go ahead and pick up part two here. When we look at this here, we're going to talk about several things that has to take place. I got like six or seven things here I'm going to share with you real quick. So we're talking about looking at uh, number six, or that's what I have on my paper here. One of the things you have to do is bind the strong man. Now, these are things that you can expect as we're taking you through deliverance. The questions we asked in the last session and right now, these are things that you're going to hear us talk about. We're going to talk about binding the strong man. So these are going to be terms you say, I don't know what that means. Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus said that it was in Mark chapter 3 and verse 27. Jesus said that we could not bind, we could not uh, spoil the strong man's house like a prison. He's got you in prison. We couldn't get in there and, and, and set a captive free unless we first bind the strong man. So you're going to hear us in a spiritual aspect of how that we bind the strong man. And that is in Mark chapter three, verse 27. If you look these references up, you're, you're able to do that and you can read about it. So you're gonna hear me say, I bind your hands with a threefold cord of Ecclesiastes 4.12. I bind you strong man, you have no authority. You're gonna hear these words and that's what we're talking about. We're binding that spiritual entity that is invisible, but Jesus said we couldn't spoil his house or set you free until we first do that. That's why we have such great success in deliverance. And even in church services where people come in is that we bind the strong man that's in every person there. And they're able to sit there and hear the word of God. 
and they're able to respond and we have a great response and people respond to it in a very positive fashion. Okay, so the next thing you're going to hear us talk about, you're going to hear us talk about uh, removal of curses. We're going to be breaking some generational curses and things like that is going to happen. So when we talk about curse breaking, we're going to talk about um, curse breaking in general. There will be things that are generations back that has people in bondage, that has maybe you in bondage. And we're going to do some confessions and we're going to, we'll see, confession is very important because what Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 says, it says that confession is made with the mouth. And then that sets things in motion for you to gain your salvation. You have to say what you believe in your heart. The same way it is, is that when you break a curse that are that's generations back, you have to say it with your mouth. I break this generational curse that is over my family. And it could be alcoholism. And it's a generational curse that comes down the bloodline. And we understand that in Galatians chapter 3, and verse 13, is that Christ has redeemed us from the curse. So by what he did on the cross, he is able to give us the authority to break that curse that the enemy has over a person's bloodline. But the thing is, is that we have to enforce it. See, people just aren't just saved because they are saved. They have to say it, comes out their mouth, and then they change their destiny by what they say. A curse is broken by what you say. So when you remove this generational curse, we go back ever how far necessary and break certain curses that are over your bloodline. So those are the things that you're going to hear. I'm telling you, these are the things you can expect when I sit down and talk with you. You're going to hear me talk about, but I want to give you time to think about them now so that you can do this here. So another thing that you're going to hear us say, talk about, we're talking about everything is done in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is very powerful. So when we talk about it, the Bible tells us in Joel chapter 2, in verse 32, it says that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I'll say who, whosoever calls upon the name of Jesus shall be delivered. That's what Joel talks about. And then it also tells us in Colossians chapter 3, in verse 17, it talks about that everything that we do, we, we do all in the name of Jesus. So everything, even deliverance, we all do this in the name of Jesus Christ because Philippians tells us, see, the, the devil does not want you to, the demons do not want you to use, the, invoke the name of Jesus. They'll, they want you to invoke all, all kind of names. But I'm just letting you know the name that, that works, okay? It's the name of Jesus. And because the Bible tells us that what's going to happen is in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And that means, that just doesn't mean mankind. That means demons, fallen angels, angels. Every knee is going to bow to the glory of God the Father. So everything we do is done in the name of Jesus. So, so those are things that you're going to hear us pray. I'm going to ask you to pray in the name of Jesus because that invokes the power of what Jesus Christ did at the cross. Now, when we're talking about Jesus, you're going to hear us in deliverance sessions. You're going to hear many people talk about different things. So some's going to say, well, I see everything done in the name of Jesus. But you're going to see where people have the anointing oil. There's going to be anointing oil in a little vial. And we will anoint people with this oil. That means put it on their forehead or put it different places on their body, wherever this is. But why do we do that? It's because it says in Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, it says that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, the anointing that Jesus has or the anointing that he gives to his followers, but the anointing oil, the oil is a representation of the anointing of God. And the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. So a lot of times when we're taking people through deliverance, we'll say, we'll take anointing oil, we'll put it on them, on their forehead or what have you, and say, the anointing destroys the yoke that you have over them. You hear me, you demonic spirit? And you have to it, you have to turn them loose because it destroys the yoke that you have as well. So when we're talking about this here, and then another thing is that you'll see that sometimes people uh, they'll use their Bible, the, the the Word of God. They'll hold the Bible up, you know. They'll take the Bible and they may place it and lay it on somebody. Well, the Bible is the sword of the Spirit. This is the Word of God. It's spiritual, but.
but it is an actual sword is what in the spirit realm. So when you hold the Bible up, the spirit, the demon doesn't see that. He sees a sword because he knows that this represents a spiritual sword. So when I come against you with the word of God, I come against you piercing you with the sword of the spirit. These are things that you're going to hear. And you're going to say, what craziness is this? Well, it's not crazy. It's all spiritual. And these are the things that you can expect us to do, even if I'm doing it right here over, over a camera or what have you, that you understand uh, the things that's happening. And then, of course, when we talk about this here, we understand that there is a, let me see what I got right here. When we talk about the cross is that the, when Jesus talked about to go and, the, and he said that the spirit of the Lord God was upon him is in Luke 4 and 18. And that he, he was sent to preach deliverance to the captives and to preach the gospel. Well, the gospel is a part of the cross. The cross of Jesus. So at times you're going to see where people hold a cross or use a cross or it might be there. And it's just a representation of a spiritual symbol that Christ represents that cross that destroyed the yoke and destroyed the kingdom of darkness. So these are the demons hate these religious symbols because they know what they mean. Even if a person doesn't, they know what they mean. And when you invoke these spiritual things like that, it's not some kind of craziness, but it is an actual spiritual encounter of what deliverance is. And then, okay, that's it. When we talk things about the name of Jesus, the oil and the cross and things like that. So another thing is that someone says, well, one of the things that you're going to hear us say, and I'm going to get you to say it, is that when a spirit comes out, I want it to go to the pit in the name of Jesus. Now, there can be a controversy here about where do you send the demonic spirits when they leave? Some people say they send them to the feet of Jesus or they just cast them out. I do it the way I've seen others do it in where the Lord has shown me. And I take my scripture references when it talks about it in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 29 to 33, that there were two, there were two men that came to Jesus who were of the land of the Gadarenes and they were demoniacs and they came to Jesus and the demons spoke out of them and said, have you come to torment us before our time? Now, G there is a time when Jesus will cast all demonic spirits permanently into the pit of hell. That's going to happen. But at this time here, they're, they're thinking that this is the time that is actually going to happen. So they said, if you cast us out, don't cast us uh, into this place. Uh, cast us into, let us go into the pigs and into the swine. So they allowed that to happen. So they cast the pig, they, he allowed the, 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 the demons to go into the pigs. And of course, they went and drowned themselves. Now, so that is it. When we talk about casting demons out, that is why we send them where we send them at. And in reality, God does whatever he's really going to do with them. And don't fall out with me if someone says, well, I just don't believe that. Well, it works. And people come out. And I'll tell you this here. <laughs> when you start making that demon confess he's going to the pit, they don't want to say that last word. They don't want to say pit. They'll say everything. I go now, and their mouth will lock up because they don't want to go. Because they they say they say make an enunciation of where they're going and what they're going to do. It's like when you get up and you go to work. You get up in the morning time. You tell them what you tell them or who's ever on the phone. Hey, I'm getting up. I'm getting ready to go to work, and I can expect you to get up and go out that door. Because that's what you've said. And that's what they do. What you say is what you get. And that's what they do. Out the pit they go in the name of Jesus. And then that anointing oil. You're going to hear us say this here. It's in the process of setting this person up for deliverance. Now, when we do this here, we're talking about blinding the third eye. Now, this is a part of deliverance that deliverance ministers understand. Is that the pineal gland is right here in the front of your, right here in the front. And it is the doorway into the supernatural that witches, uh, different places, people try to open up this spiritual doorway into the pineal glands through drugs or what have you. There is a thing that's called the third eye. And if you're sitting there listening to me now and you say, well, I never understood that or what it is. Well, that that is something that is forbidden in the Bible uh, in these kind of things. So what we do is because that's what people have involved themselves in a lot of witchcraft, that 
we take anointing oil, and I told you about the anointing destroys the yoke. You'll actually blind the third eye. It actually slams shut so that there is not drawing any spiritual energy, demonic energy through that. So you're going to hear us say these things, and then you're going to know what we're doing. Maybe you'll study it up yourself, but these are things that you can expect as we go through this here. So let's go ahead as, we, as we're moving right along here. And I want to make sure I get plenty of time to share all of this here. And then what we're going to do, we want to talk about uh, unforgiveness. Is we, We've already talked about um, binding the strong man. We've also talked about... Um, we've talked about um, a removal of curses in the name of Jesus. We've talked about all of these things here taking place right now. So we're expecting... Uh, we're talking about... Um, casting him through the pit, the third eye, the name of Jesus, the oil, the cross. All of these things are very important as you go through deliverance. Now, this part that I'm getting ready to uh, share with you is, is paramount. It, is, it hinges all on this right here. Because if you're not willing to do this, then there is no need to go any further in any of this here. But it is uh, unforgiveness, dealing with unforgiveness. And what, what we're talking about is that it was in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 34. And in that, in that uh, parable that Jesus is giving, they're asking, how often should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Should it be 70 times 7, which would be 490? How often should I forgive? And he, he talks about unforgiveness is a, uh, it doesn't matter how many times they have transgressed, God expects us to forgive. So what the enemy does, he sets up a stronghold. Remember how we're going to bind the strong man? That he sets up a stronghold with unforgiveness in people's life. And that your forgiveness of sin is based on how you forgive others. It's paramount. And that's why the enemy tries to hold you captive or hold a person um, you know, in debt. Like, yeah, you just never know what they did to me. I'll never be able to forgive them. And your forgiveness of sins and your standing and the right standing with God is based off of how you forgive others. So what the enemy does is because of the hurt and the unforgiveness that has happened in someone's life, whether it be through molestation or a bad deal or a bad marriage or, or uh, a lawsuit or it could be any time. It could be going down just to McDonald's or it could be just going to buy a car and you get a bad deal and you hate you hate the people or. Uh, or people treated you wrong in school, or it could be anything that would set up a a, a time of uh, a feeling of unforgiveness, and that's an open door to allow demonic spirits of unforgiveness to come in. And so we deal with unforgiveness, and we say, "What's the worst thing that someone has ever done to you that would make you harbor unforgiveness?" And then we we forgive them. I mean, well, I'll lead you through that prayer of unforgiveness to that very, very hurtful thing and, re and release them. And then what you're going to find out is that what people don't understand about this open door to unforgiveness is that there has been a spirit of unforgiveness that came in because of that situation. You forgive the person and you release them. But why is it that when you walk outside and you go down the road or you get in bed at nighttime and you're thinking, here comes this voice come talking to you about the very thing that you just got forgiveness, you, you forgave. It's because you got rid of the unforgiveness, the spiritual side of it, but there was a demon that you didn't get set free from. It's called a spirit of unforgiveness. So we will cast out that spirit of unforgiveness and now that voice won't come to you about that situation, that if it does come, it's a, it's just on the outside, and you just push it away. Say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not listening to that. And one of the things that you have to understand about how powerful that your mind is, is that your thoughts have to be guarded and controlled by yourself. And that thoughts are like hinges on a door. That as soon as you start thinking about a situation or something, hinges form. And when those hinges starts to form, you continue to talk about it. Next thing you know, a handle form, a doorknob forms. 
And the next thing you know, the devil's standing on the other side of it. He pushes the door open and comes in. You must guard your thoughts about this unforgiveness in these different situations. That is how you're going to keep the enemy out. It's all done in the name of Jesus. Guarding your thoughts, casting down all these vain imaginations and all of these things. But we will help you through this. This is not going to be overwhelming. We will help you through this and we will show you how to gain your deliverance and how to maintain your deliverance and how that you can battle effectively. Listen to me, y'all. The word of God works. It really works. But I'm telling you that the religious system has not taught God's people how to do spiritual warfare and understand the need of getting set free of these demonic spirits. They're carrying them around with them and then keeping them out. And once they get out, of course, they're going to try to come back in and then you just got to keep them out. That's what your job, that's what deliverance is constantly going to be about in your life. But it does work and you will be much the better for it. You'll be more, you'll be prosperous. Listen here. You'll smile. You'll laugh again. You'll, the spirit of depression will leave. I'm talking about it's a whole different life. The deliverance sets captives free. Can you imagine getting out of prison for all these years? Being in prison for years. Being, oh, I'm, I'm alive, but I'm in a prison. And it's a spiritual prison. And come out, oh my God, it's just so much different to be able to get set free from all of these things. So that's going to be unforgiveness. We're going to talk about that in a, in a later session when we're dealing with all of these things here. So it uh, looks like I'm coming up on my time here just to do a few more. So let's go ahead and get this done here. I want to talk to you about how what's the difference between demonic manifestations and when a person is going through deliverance. Now, this is going to be very key for all those people out there who are deliverance ministers, wanting to be deliverance ministers, and those who are seeking deliverance. So let's talk about demonic manifestations. When a demonic spirit is attacking the body and you're going through deliverance, you're going to make you feel things in your body. When I, we start calling spirits out, they'll start moving. You may have pain in your back. There'll be a twisting. There'll be pain in the back. You might get uh, a headache. We're sitting here. You don't have a headache now. And as we start calling these things out, you will get a, uh, a headache. Or you might, the person might start shaking, visibly shaking. Uh, they'll say in my stomach, ooh, man, I've got butterflies in my stomach. Oh, that's good. Because the demonic spirits do not like it. They do not like what we are, are doing and, and the things that we're taking care of here. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about whatever. So you might, um, the body might get hot. Whew, man, I'm getting hot. Why am, I, why, why, am I, why am I so hot here? Something's going on here. Well, it's the spirits manifesting in you. Now, these are demonic manifestations. And then what we're talking about is that you may get blurred vision. Some people get blurred vision. Or when we start talking about casting that spirit out, like come out, and I make them repeat it, come out, and they'll say, come. And, they, and the spirit will not let them talk because it's grabbed a hold of them right here in their throat. It will not let them talk. These are demonic manifestations. This is not meaning that you're going through deliverance. It's manifesting in your body. They can even take a person and toss them to the ground. There are things to where I have seen uh, knots in the body. I mean, as big as this, go through their body. I've seen all kinds of things. I'm trying to tell you what a demonic manifestation is. And don't confuse a demonic manifestation for deliverance from the spirit. Because I want to share with you what deliverance ministers are looking for and what you should be looking for. And those who are out there who's never been taught this, that it's not, see, a spirit can take a person, twist them and tort them, contort them, throw them to the ground or the not, then all of a sudden they go, it stopped. The pain stopped. Where did it go? Well, it didn't go nowhere. <laughs> it just stopped. And to the person who is unlearned, that demon goes home with you. But then, but to the, 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 the person who knows that there are certain signs of deliverance when the person, the candidate or the, the person who is going through deliverance, there are certain signs that we look for. And understand this here so that when we call the spirit out, I'm looking at you. See, over the phone is difficult. 
because what I try to do is say, well, tell me, what are you feeling? Tell me, tell me, I, say, I can't see them. So I try, I try to say, tell me what are, what are you doing? You know, tell me what's going on. They'll say, well, I'm burping. Well, see, as I go down this list here, you're going to find out the signs or deliverance are these things. They come out your airways. Spirits come out the airways. They may twist and, and contort you, but just because it stops does not mean it's gone unless there's a visible sign of it coming out your airways. Always remember this. This is, this is without exception. There is no other way, okay? So a person is, is a, they may cough. <laughs> they may cough these things out or they may, uh, they may drool in the, the saliva. They may drool coming out your airways or your, the uh, orifices in your body. Or you may vomit. They may come up and they may vomit. Uh, spitting. Just, just outright, I got to spit, supernaturally spit. I got to have something to spit in. And, and they're sitting here. They don't have to spit now, but I, I got to have something. So uh, another thing is that they can foam at the mouth, where it's coming out their mouth and things like that. Or a person may start crying just as we call them out. They'll just sit down and start weeping and they'll, they'll break down on their crying uh, and things like that. Another one is they scream. It's coming out this this orifice is the air. They scream. Ah, it'd be loud. They'll scream, or some people will start sighing. Now, sighing to me is one of the hardest ones to recognize, but some people sigh. And you need to ask God, say, God, please let me be a sire. <laughs> because what happens is all they're doing is this right here. They're going, <sighs> they're breathing this breath out. They ride your breath out as you scream. Say, so try to do this here. Try to scream. Uh, uh, Taking in a breath in. Can't do it. You scream, the breath coming out. Everything, something's coming out of the body is what it does. Roaring. Rawr, loud roar as it's going out. I've had, I've had a few of them. You know, one recently here is top of the charts. But a roaring is one of them. And then another one is belching. Some people call it burping. They'll just be sitting there and they'll, be, they'll start burping. They'll start, why am I burping? Well, it's that spirit that's coming out. These are signs of deliverance. Now, these are signs that we're looking for the person. The other ones I talked about, the twisting and the hurting, the pain, those are demonic manifestations of the demon in the body. But now we're talking about, and so don't never confuse that demonic manifestation as a sign of deliverance because what you've done, you've just stirred that spirit up, is what you did. And, as, and because they're so smart, they know how just to stop the pain and the de deliverance minister who's unwary go, well, look at that, that, that spirit going to come out. No, you're waiting for the sign of deliverance through the person, through the airway, coughing, drooling, vomiting, spitting, foaming, crying, screaming, sighing, roaring, belching, yawning. The big yawn is almost like a hippopotamus yawn. They'll start yawning all of a sudden and there'll be a yawner and these spirits are coming out through those air or just the exhaling. They'll come out like that. Now, just to go ahead and for those deliverance ministers who may be listening and want to know more, I'll give you a little more as a deep dive. This is your deep dive for those there is that your eyes are the only other organ in your body that can take in oxygen is through your eyes. And your eyes are so th such a thin membrane. If you ever work in a chemical plant and you learn all of these things, that how that you must protect your eyes because oxygen can, can be gained in through your eyes and you can absorb things through your eyes very easily. We have taken people through deliverance and if the oxygen can go in, it, things can come out that we have, the person will say, my eyes feel like a breeze coming out of them. And I've even had some who've had uh, glasses on as we're taking them through deliverance. We take them through deliverance and their glasses actually fog up as that spirit's coming out. So it comes out your airways. Now, that is just your deep dive for deliverance ministers. Those are the things that we look for, uh, for things like that. So there is a difference between um, how a demon manifests. And I said this about shaking and uh, all kind of, I've seen eyes turn completely black. Uh, I've seen people change their, their, their physical uh, features just totally change over a person. So that's just a demonic manifestation. And what we do is you look for that spirit to come out. Now, <clears throat> deliverance is not a scary thing. So that's why I wanted to share with you these things. And don't, 
be fearful of this here because God's not giving you a spirit of fear. So here's the thing. You need to watch part one, part two. You need to also make sure that you come to the Lord with the right heart and say, I, you've got to admit to him, Adam and Eve had messed up in the garden. And they had to approach God and say, we have sinned. And because they came out from behind their fig leaf and they talked to the Lord, the Lord delivered them from the sin and that bondage and made a way for them. But they had to confess that they had messed up. That's the same thing that we have to do. All of us have to do that. So when, you, when you're willing to say, I need help, then that's when God can help. But until then, then nobody can help you. And so who needs who needs deliverance? Everybody needs deliverance. The main ones that need it, especially in churches, all pastors need deliverance. Every one of them, without exception. They need deliverance worse than anybody in their congregation because they're the leaders. They need deliverance. Then their wives need deliverance or whoever their spouse is. And then they can take that, their whole leadership. And the church needs deliverance. And then all the people in church need deliverance. It works out like that. All the people that are, that are trying to do these things in America, you know what our leaders need? They need deliverance because that's what they're battling. They're battling spiritual entities while they're up there in those places. Well, I think that's it. I think I've done my time here. And uh, I just want you to know is that you can uh, contact us. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description of how you can contact us and say, hey, pastor, I, I want deliverance. Now, what's going to happen is that we're going to have some more sessions about this. And then I'm going to start doing short videos. And I'm going to put together a short video of how we can take a person through deliverance. And, and uh, so what I want you to do is get my email, get the email address that's going to be in the link here, and send me the information or text it to me or ever how you can get it to me. It's going to be easy or Telegram or whatever you want to do. I want you to do a video about this. I need to be set free from this. Can you help me? And you just put it there and then we will do the videos on it and we'll start working through this here. It's going to be fun. It's going to be good. And Jesus died for this. So let me pray right now. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your blessing. We pray over that individual there who's looking for deliverance. I pray God that you will help them. Lord, we know what Jesus Christ did at the cross. And you said that there would be no demonic spirits that would be able to stand before your church, but you could set them free. Help us, Lord, to the minister freedom and deliverance, salvation to these, your people. And Father, those people who are requesting deliverance, help work that out so it can remedy their problems quickly. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do with these, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, amen, amen. Well, it's been my pleasure, everybody. Can you tell, listen here, I love deliverance. There is nothing like setting people free. There is nothing like telling the devil where to get off at. There's nothing like telling him that you were defeated at the cross. And this is the last day and the last moment that you're going to torment somebody. There's nothing like it. And Jesus gave this authority to his church for us to do it. So remember, Go to the YouTube channel, subscribe. Go to um, Telegram, subscribe. Past Deliverance with Pastor Henry. Check us out on Rumble, and I don't know where else we're going to be at. But um, we're going to prepare all of these uh, for everybody. So I'm getting ready to get out of here. God bless you. Thank you, hey, uh, And thank you so much for being uh, part of the uh, program here tonight.